I'm David from Lavika Photography, and today we are going into uh, color calibrating your camera. So, most of this is done in the studio, but some of this stuff you can actually do out in the field too. But the first thing that we have to do is calculate our white balance. So, let's go ahead and start with that. And as I build up to this, you'll see what I'm doing here. Now here in the studio at Method Art, if, if you see behind me, I've got these like LED wand lights and black walls of foam core up. Um, here at Method Art, typically I shoot paintings. So everything needs to be like super color accurate to shoot artwork. So that's my goal today is to calibrate the system to do that. But realistically, you can use this to pretty much do anything. Uh, and I do a couple of different setups. It just depends on which lights I'm using. But like I said, today I'm using these wand lights, and these are special lights because they have a uh, polarized um, linear polarization film over it, so I can knock out the glare. But that's a whole nother video on its own. We'll get into that later on. Uh, but realistically, the first thing that we're going to start with is white balance. So let's go ahead and dive into it. I only worry about this when I'm shooting something that needs to be like really color accurate. So if I'm if I'm out adventuring, shooting landscapes or doing street photography or anything like that, I don't worry about this. It's not that big of a deal. But in situations where I'm shooting product for clients or um, artwork, everything's got to be extremely color accurate. So today I'm going to show you how I set up for artwork in my studio because this is a very controlled environment. So really quick, let's talk about the actual studio setup. So my studio setup is really basic. I mean, you know, basically I'm just stuck in an area with all my artwork and I've got a free wall that I can pretty much use for all this stuff. But behind me, you'll see I've got big tall sheets of black foam core. And then within the foam core there, uh, you can see that. That's one of my wand lights. And so I've got two of these. They're LED lights and they're polarized with linear polarization filters. I'll get into that in, in another uh, video. But uh, th that's what I use for shooting artwork. So just to let you know, these are 5300K. And then my lights in the ceiling, these can lights above me are about 5100K to 5000K, somewhere around there. So when the lights are on, that's what I use to actually adjust the artwork. But when I'm shooting the artwork, I only use the wands. But before we do anything, we got to set the white balance. So let's go ahead and do that now. And we're going to do this today on the A7R3. And it doesn't matter what camera system you're using. If you're using Olympus, Fuji, uh, Canon, Nikon, Pentax, all that stuff. Um, Sony, of course, because that's what we're doing today. Um, all these have custom white balance settings that you can utilize. And they get you just one step closer to where you need to be. It's, not, it's still not 100% color accurate, but it gets you closer, more in the ballpark. So anyway, let's go ahead and dive into this here. All right, so in order to do this, I've got a piece of foam core sitting here, and I've got several sheets lying around, but I'm using this one specifically. And I already know what my exposure is. So if you're in an environment, you need to test your exposure first to figure out where your correct exposure is. And once you try to set the white balance, it'll tell you if there's an error. That's pretty much what it'll do. But anyway, I'm shooting in the center of the foam core. And then let me just get the camera steady here. All right, so I'm shooting in the center of the foam core. I already know what my exposure is supposed to be. And if I run into issues shooting white foam core, it'll tell you if it's too bright because it won't be able to calculate it. So in this case, I know it's going to read just fine. So let me turn off the overhead lights. So this is the lighting that I use to shoot in. So we're going to go ahead and calculate the white balance on this camera. So for this, we are going to go into the function menu and then we're going to go into our white balance and then we're going to hit set. And so all you have to do is have it pointed in the middle of your foam core. I recommend foam core because most foam core is usually pretty dead on white. And go ahead and press the center button. And now it's calculating it. And it's going to tell me what it is right here. So that's our actual setting. So we're going to select it. And now we're going to go to the function and it's set in the first setting. 
So custom one. Now you can set up custom white balance settings for other environments and I do actually use the other uh, two environments as well. So, but for this one, I use this. So this is what the white balance needs to be set at. Now I know that the white balance is going to be accurate. So now we're going to move on to the color checker, this thing. And uh, X-Rite makes this one and then there's one that's also made by Data Color. These are pretty much the same. As a matter of fact, they use the same exact colors, just not in the same exact order. Now these are not printed colors. These are actually mixed and I think they're um, like a actual true paint color because they, they almost feel like paint chips. They've got a little bit of texture to them. They're not, you can tell they're not printed. Uh, so they must be screened on or something like that. This is going to be part of our ProTune. And that's the only way I could describe it. But we're going to go ahead and put this in the shot now and take a photo of that. So let me just set that in the middle of our chart here. And now I'm going to come back down here. And I'm just going to tilt this down a little bit. Before I do that, i got to turn my overhead lights off. Now I'm in the exact same lighting that I would actually be in um, when I'm shooting. So now I'm just going to move my focus. I'm going to move my focus box directly over the color checker and I'm going to take a shot. I have this set up on a two second delay so that's why you're hearing beeping. And it's a 10 second exposure. All right, now let's move over to the computer. Now this doesn't really matter if you're using Photoshop or Lightroom. You can pretty much do the same thing. Uh, so let me just show you what we have to do here. So I'm going to bring my RAW file in off of my camera. And this is what we ended up with. Nothing too exciting, but this is the area that I usually shoot in. So that's all I really needed was this. So from here, uh, I am going to go in and I'm going to reset my camera defaults so everything is now kind of how I want it to be and then for my lens correction I'm going to go in and turn on remove chromatic aberrations enable profile corrections I'm going to go into my sharpening and turn the sharpening off because sharpening creates a micro level of contrast that you don't really need and then I'm going to put on my noise reduction just because sometimes uh, if I have to zoom into something, you'll start to get a little noisy, but I still like to set this on 30 just in case. And then over here for my basic stuff, I don't need to change anything in here. We want this to be just like this. Now our temperature says 4900 at plus 39. Now I know for a fact that our lights are 5000, so we're going to put this at 5000 because that's what's measuring not exactly what this is computing. So that's what we're going to do. We're setting this at 5,000. Now right now this looks pretty good. Now hopefully, hopefully you can see that my color chart's in the shot. So basically we're going to zoom in and just kind of look at this and you can see right off the bat that everything's just a little different. It's not bad, it's pretty close, but it's a little, little off. So from here what I'm going to do is I'm going to click down here at the bottom of the screen where it says sRGB and it has my file information. I'm going to click on that. And then from here, uh, I'm going to leave this on 16 bits per channel. And basically, the color space is sRGB. So we want it to be sRGB when it's coming in. Even though I'm shooting on the camera in uh, Adobe 1998 for a wider gamut, uh, for this, we have it output to sRGB. So that's what we're going to do. So anyway, uh, we're going to hit OK. So that's the workflow. And then now I'm going to save the image. So I click on save right here. And we can put this anywhere. I'm going to put this right back in its same location. I'm going to call this chart. So anyway, now I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And now you can see over here in my file manager that it just popped up as a DNG file. So from here, I'm going to hit cancel because all we needed to do was create a DNG file. So now I'm going to slide this down. I'm going to open up my color checker passport software. 
and then I'm going to drag the chart into the middle of this and you can do this with any photo so let's say if you're shooting with a model on location uh, you can have her hold the passport and do the same thing and just bring it in and then the software pretty much auto detects where the boxes are you can adjust it if you need to but all these squares are hitting pretty much the center of all these boxes so I think we're good here so we're gonna hit create profile and now I can call this um, I'm going to call this Sony a7R 3 artwork because we're gonna shoot paintings with this and I'm gonna go ahead and hit save now it's saving my custom profile so now we can close that and then we'll go back into Photoshop now we're gonna drag the same original raw file that we just created that DNG from in and from here we're going to go to our profile and we're going to click on browse profiles and then we're going to go down to profiles and then there's our two the artwork one is the first one that comes up so I'm going to select that and then I am going to hit close so if we zoom into this now we can look at our our colors so now I can sit there and look between the, the two charts to see how close they are and right off the bat I do see some some minor issues so I noticed that uh, my red is not bright enough uh, my yellows are not bright enough um, everything's just just a smidge off it looks good but it's not 100 percent accurate so in order to correct this I need to adjust all my stuff over here so my temperature right here we know is supposed to be 5000 but it changed it to 5150 I have no idea why but it did so that needs to be 5000 and uh, our tint needs to be 39 because this is actually what it registers at so the color profiling software is not exactly what I would call like perfect okay so now that's at 39 um, again that looks a little bit better but our whites are still let me turn on my peaking thing just to see where our whites are at so we want to pull our whites up now I would have to bring that up 68 percent to bring that up to pure white I know that's not what I need to do uh, just from experience I can tell you that I need to pull my whites up to about 20 to get this more accurate with this setup uh, I know that we're going to be just a hair underexposed so I already know that my whites need to be 20 and my exposure needs to be plus 10 that's just what this needs to be and then my highlights I'm gonna go ahead and pull those up 10 just because uh, for some reason Sony just it tries to control the whites and not let them blow out so for some reason it always seems to be knocking my whites down and that's really not what I want to do but anyway uh, looking back at the color checker reviewing my my colors my blues a little off and my red is a little off my yellow looks good the orange up here looks good uh, this is a little off so from here we'll go into our uh, HSL adjustments and this brings up the saturation and luminance and hue of each color so the first thing I'm going to start with is the hue and so my blues need to be a little bit more purpley and probably right about there so plus 15 on my blues and that feels about right my aquas are actually a little undone uh, this this one up here so I'm gonna go minus like five six on my aquas that feels more accurate here our reds are still just a hair off so our reds need to be redder um, so I'm going to adjust this plus 10 and our oranges how do our oranges feel oranges feel pretty good so let me slide over to the other bar over here and see how everything looks there everything looks good there so I'm going to stick with this our yellows are just need to be slightly to the orange side and then luminance so our yellows need to be brighter 
And then our purples and blues all seem to look pretty good. Our purple area, um, this cube over here, this one, and on here, that one needs to be brought up just a little bit. So we don't want to over adjust, but we want to bring it up just a little bit. Five-ish. Yeah, that looks good. Our reds need to be a little brighter. So plus five on the reds. So looking through these colors here, as I'm, as I'm going through here and I'm looking down here, uh, these all seem to be pretty good now. I am pretty much there. My magenta over here is still a little off. So we're going to go ahead and brighten that one. And we're going to bring that up to about five. And then we're going to go over to the hue of the magenta. I'm going to push that a little bit more towards the reds. It's probably about five. That, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to say more on the saturation of the yellows, more on the saturation of the oranges, and more on the saturation of the reds. The reds, I noticed, for some reason, I always have to bring up like at least 20%. Now, if you look between these two, these are looking really, really close now. All right, so there we go. That's pretty much adjusted. From here, uh, this is where it gets really easy. So I, I just go in. All you have to do is save as new camera raw defaults. And the interesting thing about this is if you bring this in into Photoshop, you can bring in a different raw profile for each camera. So every time I bring in a photo taken with A7R3, these settings will automatically come up automatically. Everything will already be here. And then if I bring something in from my OMD EM1 Mark II, I can create a different profile for that. And when I bring them in, they will all be here. So now it doesn't matter what I bring in, I can just pull in a RAW file. And this one already has my settings already tweaked in there. And this is the photo that I'm actually getting. So yeah, I think this is pretty much dead on. All my settings are already applied to it. So now all I have to do is just some minor cropping. That's it. So now we're going to shoot a test chart to make sure that everything is where it needs to be. So let's do that. All right, so here's our test chart. And this is actual uh, acrylic and oil paint. And we've got another little blob down there. And uh, this has a lot of the colors that have a tendency to defeat us when we're shooting artwork, especially this top row. This is where things get really hard. And uh, it's not just this, but there's also neon colors like hot pink and neon green and stuff like that that cameras just don't render. But anyway, this is where we struggle the most. And so we've got like uh, Windsor Newton Thalo Red, we've got uh, Grumbacher Thalo, and then we've got um, Utrecht Prussian. And so it's just all these different actual test pieces of paint. So what I need to do now is just shoot this thing and make sure that our settings are correct. So I'm going to turn off my light, come back over here. Now, I know you're probably thinking that I'm overexposing this because right now the exposure says it's 1.7 plus. But in reality, uh, there's a lot of white in this painting. And if I was shooting a regular painting with like a normal body to it, uh, then it would actually be like plus 0.3 or 0, depending upon how bright or dark the actual artwork was. I just know this is what it's supposed to be from a lot of experience. Okay, now we've got the image taken. So you can turn the camera off, pop this out, and load it up. Now, I normally don't jam paintings next to my monitor like this, but for this, this is pretty much what I have to do to make sure that we are uh, calibrated over here. All right, so here's our test image, and now I can zoom in here and actually just go over each one. And this is what I use for verification to make sure that that were pretty much dead on. So it's it's going through these different ones and I just manually check them right here. And apparently there's some construction going on outside. But now I can see that 
so far so good. All my blues are looking good. Looks good. And then my Grumbacher orange is a little off. So I can see that there's a slight discrepancy between what I adjusted and what I have here. So I can just go in here and change this really quick and just adjust what I need to adjust. So my, I believe that my oranges just need to be a little darker. And my greens, I've got those at minus five, probably put those at minus eight. And now I feel like that is more acceptable. So as I'm just looking across these, these all look correct. Now there's also three different types of black that we check for. So there's Grumbacher's Mars Black, there's Ultra Ivy, and then there's, or sorry, Utrecht Ivory, and then there's Windsor Newton Lamp Black. And Lamp Black is the blackest out of them all. And basically that means it's like it's made from soot or something like that. It's really, really unusual stuff. But anyway, uh, these are probably the most typical colors that I have to come across. And so now I feel like everything is right where it's supposed to be. So from here, I am going to say that this is a success and we are set up correctly. Now you can see my, my lighting is pretty much even all the way across it. Apparently there's some dust on the lens. So I have this dust mark here that needs to be cleaned up, but now I can open it up. Now in Photoshop, uh, the way that I set up this up is we turn the sharpening off in the camera, but we still want to get just a little bit of micro sharpening in there. Man, they're making a lot of noise outside. Now that I have this open, I have some actions that I made that I constantly use. And basically for this set, I call this high res and you can just go in and record your own action just by creating it in the actions tab over here. And my first action is an unsharp mask at 9% at 18 pixels. And then my next action is going to be an unsharp mask at 60% at 0.6 pixels. So what this does is it just tightens up the little areas in between stuff. And then I've got a convert action because I'm at 16 bit and I want to convert this to 8-bit and save it for the client as a TIFF. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit play. And there we go. So now we've got it. So now the ultimate thing to do next is to print this. Scale to fit media. So I'm going to do Photoshop manages colors from here. And then I already know that I've got the Paper Pro Platinum. That's what it's showing me right here. And uh, let me see here. For my print settings, I'm going to go in here, choose Photo Printing, uh, Photo Pro Platinum Paper, and it's 8.5 by 11, portrait, high quality, all this is good, yada, yada, yada. So now from here, I'm going to go ahead and print. All right, after making a minor adjustment, I'm pretty happy with the results. So this is the actual color picker here. And then this is my reprint with all my final adjustments in it right here. This is the original. Uh, so this is the color picker with just its profile added, no further adjustments. And you can see that not only is it a lot darker, but the colors are just off a little bit. Um, I can even tell that in the back of the camera, but when you compare this one to this one, uh, everything just looks a lot better, like definitely closer to a match. The actual hue and saturation and everything looks good. So if I match like those up right there, you can see that's pretty darn close. And if I match those up there versus what the original one was. So you can see it's just a big difference of night and day. So that's the kind of color calibration that you have to get to. Now here's the test print using this profile on here to get to this. And overall really, really pretty good. 
All right, so I'm like 98% there, but I'll never be 100% perfect because there just isn't a camera on the market that can do it. Now, the reason why is your eyes, they can see probably billions of colors because what happens is when you're, when you're seeing something through your eyes, you're seeing the micro contrast that you don't even realize is there, the, the little tiny bits of hue and saturation between colors that are so expansive that a digital camera can't really pick that up. Uh, there's a lot of colors that digital cameras can't see. Um, neon pink, neon green, uh, neon yellow. All those just make it kind of flip out and do other things. Uh, certain aquas, when they get to a certain point, cameras just don't do aqua very well. They don't do thalo green, thalo blue very well. You know, it's they, they just really struggle at that point. So those are the the colors were there you think you see the whole spectrum but you really don't and the problem is when you go from a digital camera like let's say your human spectrum is like this so your digital camera spectrum is like this then when you get it into the computer and after everything's adjusted and tweaked it's a little bit more like this then you want to go to print so the prints uh, entire gamut is like that so it gets narrower and narrower and narrower and the only thing you can do is get it as close as you absolutely can but it'll never be 100 percent we're just gonna have to settle for 97 98 but anyway i hope you guys like this video give me a thumbs up leave me a comment subscribe to my channel for more information like this and we'll talk to you guys later see ya